Hello Makeup Void, I'm the Makeup Schizophrenic and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is my goal on the internet to reduce the stigma against schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder by talking about relatively normal things such as having an obscene amount of makeup and today is no different. We are talking about the Nomad Cosmetics Haunted Europe Palette. This is a big boy. Super big. Here's what we're getting into. So three looks, one palette. Since Nomad Cosmetics is a new brand to me, I always like to give a little bit of information about the brand just so we know where they're coming from, what their inspiration lies. And before we get into all that, give this video a like and subscribe. I do upload videos, hopefully three times a week. Usually not. I've been really dropping the ball, but that's how life is right now. So with all that said, let's get going. So first, I want to read about the f the founders. They are Felicia and Aunt Ancy. It's a guy. So they say we are tr we are in our hearts truly nomads, having lived all over Euro U.S. and Europe and traveled to over seventy countries. We are inspired by every trip. We also know about makeup. Together, we have over twenty five years of work experience in cosmetics. In 2015, we combined our two passions and Nomad Cosmetics was born. Through it all, we stay rooted by spending time with our family, friends, and you, the beauty Nomad community. So I think I heard about this, this brand like in 2018 or 2019. And at first I was like, what? I don't, this is too small of an indie brand for me to be interested in. But I have been really keeping a close eye on them this year and last year, just kind of waiting for their perfect palette for me. And so I went with Haunted Europe. <laughs> but something they say about um, design and location, the creative beginning for every one of our products is always a unique and captivating destination. We design our makeup on location to take inspiration from the beauty of this world and, destin and the destination. Our hope is to offer you so much more than amazing cosmetics. We want you dis to discover a story and feel a transportive experience with each one of our products. And Haunted Europe is no less. They do guesses when they're releasing a palette to try to have people guess like what palette or what destination it is. So I thought it was really cool. And when they were teasing Haunted Europe, I was just thinking Germany. I, I was just straight up. Everything to me was like, this is Germany. Uh, but it's all of Europe. So what they say about the palette is, join us on the hunt to discover Europe's most spectacular scary tales. Intensely rich and delightfully lavish 18 shadows formulae with extra fine pigment pigments, nine ravishing mattes, and nine pictur picturesque shimmers inspired by the dark fairy tales of medieval unit, if infused with bilberry seed oil to help restore skin for crease-proof color, cruelty-free, and vegan. And 5% of sales are donated to Back Conversation International, so you, you get to support your uh, charity about bats with this palette, and I think that is super amazing. Now, something that Nomad Cosmetics does really well is showing just their creativity and the inspiration through the palettes, not only in the packaging, like look at this, it's holographic, and so you see different colors. I've never seen that on an eyeshadow palette before, so that's super cool. But also they do a lot of embossing. I have used this palette a few times, so they've kind of worn away, but in this palette specifically, they have like tombstones, embossings, castles, um, coffins, that's what the words are, and then like some trees, a couple spider webs, and a lot of bats. So here it is, again, a lot of cool embossing. I did swatch out the palette, but like just stuck my fingers in it before taking legit pictures, so the, these aren't really true, but that's also a testament to say that these, if you use this palette again and again, these, um, these embossings are gonna wear away. I've In the times I've used it, they're already showing wear, so if you're really sold on the uh, uh, on the embossing, it's not gonna last forever, which you expect from a makeup brand, but I felt like it was happening really quickly, especially with the spiderwebs embossing, and that's probably my favorite embossing of the whole palette. And I did not say, but this palette is $44, and it is out it's currently out of stock, but it's available for pre-order. And the pre-orders are, um, with the pre-orders, you should still get your palette in December, October. I got mine in September. But I had to prolong using this a little bit because project painting update had to happen. And I always try to push through for the last few days of that project. But 
overall this is a gorgeous palette i mean this color story is amazing you have like nine nine of the pans are more like with the greens you have some more some more warmer tones and then you have like these dusty mauves and purples with like that red so to have more of a cool tone palette cool tone side and my overall feelings of this palette is that it's good i like it and that's really has been my experience using the palette i think i've just tried so many other palettes this year that have just been top-notch high quality like this is good quality too i'm not bashing that but i feel like i've just tried really cool formulas and interesting color stories and this is definitely an interesting color story but i just feel like <sighs> i'm not blown away i am not here to sing the beautiful amazing praises that i have been on other palettes i like it i enjoy it but did I need this palette? Obviously not. Also, I'm not a spooky person. I don't really like spooky things, but it was Europe, and so that was part of the draw. And I do like some of the names, like, when I can tell that they are German, like, um, Black Forest, Krampus, and I think Rand Castle is also German. So I, I like the Ger Germanic themes of this palette because Germany is like the one destination in Europe that like I really, really, really want to go to. So I was really excited for that. And I do think this is a good grungy palette, but I don't think there's anything really spectacular about it besides the packaging and the embossing. I think if, if it was from any other brand, I might not have just cared so much because I am looking at uh, the American Parks palette. Like, I wish I jumped on that right away. But let me pull the American Parks palette up for myself and for you guys. It's just a lot of brighter, richer colors. And I know that I can definitely still buy this palette. But for time-wise, I had a lot of other palettes going on. That's why I didn't buy it when this palette came out, like, in June. But I'm still looking at it even now. I really like it. And I really do want it. It's just the colors are a lot more saturated, a lot more vibrant, which is was the whole point of that palette. And this one is supposed to be darker and spookier, which I get, which I do like the color story of, but I'm just kind of a little underwhelmed. And I'll go into that more in detail with the three looks that I show you guys, because as I do the three looks, I do talk about the individual shadows that I use and what my thoughts are when I use those shadows so you're going to get a lot more of a review of the individual shadows for the three looks part but just again overall I like this palette is it hot garbage absolutely fucking not do I think I did show the palette well on my eyes today absolutely not <laughs> I went super more grunge than even I was expecting to and the gold with the red is really throwing me off I wanted to just do red, but then I had used the gold, so I used those two, but it's a good palette. It's a good formula. The mattes are creamy, but you do need to spend some time working them up just a little bit. Like, one of the colors that really drew me in is Black Forest, which is like this deep blue, and it just took so long to build up. It was a struggle bus. I almost wanted to quit on it being like, this isn't working. I don't want to use this. But otherwise, majority of the sh other shadows are good. I like this palette. I don't know if I would spend $44 on this palette again. I think maybe if I could get like 10, 20% off of the palette, I'd be more inclined to if I was to repurchase it. But there it is. There is my quick review of the palette. Now let's go into the three looks that I did. Again, I do go into more details about the individual shadows, but if you are still interested in this palette, it is available on pre-order. You should still get it in the month of October, fingers crossed. So you still have a hopefully sometime of the month to do more spooky, grungy looks. And speaking of spooky and grungy, why isn't there all black in this palette? I know a lot of people don't care for black shadows and I'm still like a little bit adverse to them, but still, it's a spooky palette. Why isn't there a black? That's my only beef. I think also if I was to give another critique, I don't, hmm, what do I feel like is missing out of this palette? Um, I wish 
Jack Shorn Castle and the shadow over here what is it Count Dracula like they look different on the in the pans but they are pretty similar on the eyes so that would be my one beef and then another let's let's talk about this uh Hushka Castle and Boogeyman so these two golds they are so incredibly similar on the eyes I wish there was more bit of variety in those but that's me nitpicking on the palette I can't really think of what else I would say that I think I would make this better except for just the the shadows are almost so smooth they, they're almost so smooth that they don't really stick and they sort of blend away that would be kind of my really big gripe about the palette is that it they are so silky smooth but they don't have like that tackiness kind of that you need for did I put eye primer on I just realized, I don't think I used eye primer for today's look. I didn't. <laughs> so, oh uh, yeah. But the, but uh, yeah, even without using eye primer, the shadows actually blended maybe even better on my lids without eye primer. Uh, because a little bit of my quips I don't really have so maybe it was just the Milani eyeshadow primer that I had conundrum with because yeah I didn't put eye primer on my face today so with all that said if you're tapping out here thank you so much for watching and have joy but if you're sticking around let's get going to those three looks so for this first look, I am starting with the shade Bran Castle, and I am working that into the crease. I am struggling to build up the shadow a little bit. I always use the Milani eyeshadow primer in here, so like I kind of mentioned in the review where maybe that was kind of a problem I was having, but I was struggling to build the shadow. It's very pretty once you get it to the opacity that you want. I like how it's a almost like it's gray but it has that blue undertone to it which I think is a nice addition to the palette but yeah I had to struggle bringing this look bringing the color up going into the next shade I am using black forest and this shadow I struggled so hard I was really struggling in building this up brand castle was easy compared to black forest I Maybe it was the brush I was using. I used a little fluffy brush, but I was still packing it on and blending it out was easy, but it was getting to the opacity that I was looking for. Like I was just struggling so bad with this shadow. Next on the list, I am taking Big Bad Wolf. This silver is stunning. Again, it's a gray, but with a blue undertone. And this shadow is just really pretty. Now, at first I tried just putting it on the lids without any help, but I did end up spraying my brush to bring it to opacity, and that really helped. There's a lot of glitter in it, but I didn't notice that much of a fallout with it. It was just really pretty. Like, I should have just left this look with those three shadows, and I would have had a very pretty, nice, soft, grungy look. I am taking Krampus now on the lid. It looks way more purple on in the pan than it does on the eyes. Granted, I do have Big Bad Wolf right next to it. And uh, so the way I have them right now on the eyes, they look different. But as I blend them together, Krampus does kind of disappear on its own. But it's pretty. So here is the final look up close. I use Hoya Bakshu for us for the inner corner highlight. I wish it was a little bit brighter, but overall, I enjoyed this look. It was kind of an unexpected surprise. When I was first creating it, I was definitely struggling it, but the overall end result I really liked. I just used black eyeliner at the very end. Starting off with this first look, I am going into Mary King's Close to start off in my crease. This is a straightforward kind of warmer tone cream shade. It works well for this purpose. Now I've been going into the shade Frankenstein. Now this shadow I am very impressed with. I love the pigmentation, the blendability of it. It takes a little bit of time to build it up, but it takes no time at all compared to Black Forest. This is just a very stunning warm orange shade and having Mary King's clothes just like a little bit in the crease just kind of softens it up. But this, this color is stunning and I'm 
bring you can't see my eye but I am bringing it down into the lower lash line a little bit next I am taking drag Holmes castle and I am taking that on a small pointed brush that I should have probably been using in the other look and I am working that in the outer crease this shadow I loved and hated because on this eye I was able to build it up just fine but switching eyes I couldn't get it to build up and I have no idea why that was happening I was picking up the same amount on the brush I believed but I could just not I couldn't build it up on this eye I again building up the pigment it takes a little while but once I get it on my eyes to the opacity it generally blends out really well so on my lid I'm first going into Grendel the matte forest green in the shadow palette this is beautiful I was trying to use the oranges just to change up and test out the shadows but Grendel is stunning easy to build up even though I'm using a slightly denser blending brush for this purpose but it is so pretty the opacity the pigmentation I'm definitely seeing that the warmer side of the palette is stronger than the cooler tones because this was just so incredibly easy and I could have left the look where it is right now but I of course can't stop won't stop adding things going on top of Grendel is Mary Cemetery this is it seems kind of sheer but I think it's also because I had the matte green on t underneath it to really help it. I think I sprayed my brush for this shadow as well. It's pretty. I don't find this shimmer to be spectacular by any means. But on the eyes, it gives that nice little gold reflect to it. And it's just a very pretty green metallic. It just doesn't have the shine that I've been used to. And on top of it, I'm taking Highgate Cemetery for a little bit more brightness. This is the only time I use that shadow, so I can't really attest to its individual quality, but I enjoyed it for what I used it for. So this is the finished look. I really liked how this one turned out. I got mascara on my nose too. I did a black in my waterline. I did bring the Grendel down until the lower lash line as well. And this to me feels like 2016 Kayla using the warmer browns in the crease and then putting green all over the lid. Like if you want to know how I was in 2016 makeup wise, this was it. And I really enjoyed the look. It was simple. I wasn't using any crazy techniques during it. And this is something really easy that I think a lot of people can do with this palette. And I actually had a lot of fun with it. For the third and final look, I am starting with the shadow Ghost River. This is a cool toned brown that I'm just working through my crease. And I mentioned in the introduction uh, or the initial review part of this video that I did not put any eye primer down. I completely spaced on it. I think I was thinking ahead towards the review, but this isn't very pigmented. Maybe because I didn't put the eye primer down, uh, it did take a while to build up to what I wanted to, but I also didn't want this to be built up that much. Like I wanted the pigmentation there, but I wasn't really focused on bringing it higher into my underneath my brow like I typically do. I just wanted a nice base to go down for what I do next. What I've been doing now is taking the same sh brush that I was using as four, and I've been going into the shade Count Dracula to build up the outer corner or outer third, just having a nice smoky outside corner. And now I am going into the Lethal Cosmetics pot liner in the shade Redux. I am trying to do a cut crease with a black gel eyeliner pot. Yeah, this was a process to figure it out, but you'll kind of see towards the end kind of what my goal was, but I'll talk a little bit more about Count Dracula. It is very close to Drag's home castle. It it really is. Um, pairing it with Ghost River, it has some more of the cool tones with, but I could have taken or leaving it without the shadow. I probably could have used Drag's home castle for this look and been totally fine. Now I'm going into the shadow Bloody Mary Bloody Mary is pretty on top of the black base. Oh my goodness. So I am covering up the black all the way from the middle to the outer corner to kind of create that faux wing that I have going on. Bloody Mary is a 
beautiful shadow. These, this is pretty hard press. I've noticed that with the majority of the shimmers that um, it takes a little bit to build up like they are, but they're, I don't know how to explain how they're soft yet hard press at the same time. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I had a lot of fun uh, using Bloody Mary. I could have stopped the look here. I really wanted to, but like I mentioned, I have to use that gold, which we're doing right now. Uh, the gold I think I'm using is Huska Castle. I can't really remember because I ended up putting Boogeyman on top of it to see if it would add another effect. Maybe I flip-flopped them. I don't know. Uh, I genuinely don't know and I wouldn't be able to figure out by watching back this footage but I think it looks cool but I personally don't like red and gold together so that's kind of what I was running into in terms of preference but I think the Huska Castle and Boogeyman performed well I don't have any real issues with those two shadows Okay, and here is the finished look. I just used more black eyeliner and the shadow Count Dracula to finish the lower lash line. And this look is good. I like that I kind of went a little bit out of my comfort zone by doing the black cut crease, but I enjoy the look. Red and gold is not my thing, but I still like how it turned out. I had the same feelings as I did with the other shadows working um, the other ones in this palette. And... Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like and subscribe and have joy. Mm -hmm.